Hello guys, I am now in EOS IO Swiss workshop number 11, EOS the full spectrum power. And I am here with Jesse Jaffe, digital marketing on EOS Biz for the second time into a EOS IO Swiss workshop. So welcome, Jesse. Nice to be with you. Thank you, Patrick. So nice to be with you. Happy to be here again. Thank you. Let's address some interesting topics. First one, I want to just remind for the people, uh, just after the Eden election, first official election, October 9, and now it's official, you, are, you have received the funds. So maybe can you just uh, explain for the audience what are your thoughts uh, about this Eden election, October 9, and uh, the result? Yeah, um, totally. I, I want to take a moment to just reflect um, just back in August, I was not very well known in EOS, and I went on to an Eden open mic. I, I told uh, Chris Barnes and, and Lovejoy an idea that later became EOS Bees, and um, now I was elected as, as chief delegate, and I'm you know um, more well known in the EOS community, and I'm just so thankful and grateful that Eden was really a vehicle for me to get my idea out and to um, uh, promote uh, within the within EOS community. So, Eden, it, it's just a, it's such a special um, project and platform. And so, my experience in the in the election was incredible and extraordinary. Um, the the political playoffs were were super cool and and intimate and and um, getting through each round, getting to know everyone in each round, getting through each round, and then at the end having that like one hour countdown for the, the random winner, it was like, uh, like very sus suspenseful. And um, so that was awesome, um, getting to the final round. So since then, I've, I'm a chief delegate with my five other chief delegates. And it's been really interesting to um, collaborate with them and to make decisions. So we make our decisions with a two thirds plus one consensus. And there are so many things, being the first chief delegates, there's so many things that, that we work on. And to, it, we have such an incredible team. Like Eden really picked incredible people. Like we're so um, unique and diverse and with, with different skill sets. Um, so we have myself and, and Randall and, and John and Aaron, we are working on our own projects. And then we have Chris and Lovejoy who are kind of like more community. They're using their funds to more help the community in general. So we have a really, really cool balance. Um, of course, John and Aaron are, are developers and, and uh, Randall are developers. And so we have like three developers, three non-developers. And it, it was just, it couldn't have been any better, the Eden process and just um, developing a relationship with my chief delegates and the other delegates too. Um, I, it was. It's just been amazing. Absolutely, that's a nice combo uh, of uh, education. Uh, I would say also development and uh, a level of um, let's say politicals a little bit into the discussion. That's uh, very interesting. And Brandon Lovejoy is one of our uh, guests into this EOSIO Swiss workshop. I, I have also the opportunity. To, to, to speak with him. So shout out to all the Eden chief delegates. Well, this round that was uh, randomized at the last round and deserve to win for all the tooling with uh, Graymas and uh, Anchor Wallet and now yes. Unicov and, and all. Uh, today, it's not uh, too much technical, this workshop, uh, but it's very... Um, cool to mention it, that we need uh, infrastructure, tooling, and marketing. That's the, the, the triangle that we need into the, into the EOS ecosystem. When I first went on your show, Patrick, we had two hives, or we had three hives. We had the English hive, the, the Turkish hive, and the Korean hive. Exactly. Now, um, well, we actually don't have the funding for all our hives, but now we have up to 16 hives, 16 different languages. Amazing. It's been a, an absolute explosion of growth. Perhaps we've grown a little too quickly relative to our funding, but um, 
it's just been such a roller coaster, such a journey. And yeah. And so, yeah, we've gone a long way since we last spoke. So I'm, I'm so glad to be on here. Yeah. And Jesse, you are a very hard worker. Uh, you are a doer. You are doing your stuff silently. You speak when you have to to speak. I I I, uh, I love that. And all the EOSBs, the workers, the scouts, the princess into the different hives are doing a fantastic job. So shout out to to hold the the bees. I would say. Thank you. Yeah, everyone's doing a great job. Absolutely. The growing is just uh, amazing to see. And uh, it's incredible to, to think this is just, uh, uh, we are just uh, December 9 onto this workshop and you are begun in uh, August, as you, as you mentioned it. So that's just incredible, the progression. You can learn about what each hive has done in the month of November. This is our first month that we are actually paying bees. Each one will have a report that, that you can look at at the links below the video. Totally. It's transparent. Uh, we are on EOS blockchain, the EOS mainnet, public and permissionless blockchain. So around EOS, we have different collaborative ecosystems. EOS bees is one. Pomelo, we can explain about your grant. And there are other ecosystem around EOS for sure. There are also EOS support, that is also going with a Pomelo grant. Uh, there are different ecosystem that were already into Eden on EOS uh, election. And now they are going through Pomelo to receive something from the crowdfunding. Uh, we wanted to go on Pomelo. Um, we are a public good for the EOS blockchain. Um, our marketing material and our marketing work um, as long as you uh, talk, as long as you are related to EOS, we will help you with marketing. We have around 250 bees across 16 languages. We need to decide relative to our funding what we can do. The more funding that we get, the more marketing work we can do for EOS projects. I am I'm so grateful for the support we're getting on Pomelo right now. Um, I think we're currently the number two. Um, biggest raise when you count um, donations and the matching, if it were to end today. With those funds, there's many kind of ways we can um, use those funds. Um, the, the most basic is we want to put more of our hives online. Right now, we have six active hives. Active means that they're, they're getting paid. That's English, Turkish, Korean, Vietnamese, Spanish, and French. Even with our six hives, the incentives are low. Um, the average salary per bee for our six hives is around eight EOS a month. And so, you know, we're doing what we can with the salary incentives that we have. Mm -hmm. So, so what we want to do with the funds is increase our salary per bee and onboard more hives so we can get more languages funded and growing those um, language communities. So that's the, that's kind of the main thing we're going to use with the funds from Pomelo. We have kind of two buckets of funds that come from EOSBs. One side of it is we're saying part of EOS inflation should go to a project like EOSBs. The bees decide what projects they want to promote. And it can be any project. As long as the project is related to EOS, we will use our network to promote the project. Remember guys, EOSBs is an outreach marketing um, right. solution. So it's clear that the, 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 the inflation of EOS, a part of the inflation of EOS could serve to fund EOSBs as a general solution to market the entire EOS ecosystem. And when I say the entire EOS ecosystem, I think about the solution in, into this ecosystem, the dApps, the, any kind of initiative that is giving a, a, something value added for the EOS ecosystem, right? 
Right. Um, and when we when we talk later about um, our we're going to a new model that we're calling 2.0, it's going to solve um, a challenge that I'll briefly describe right now, which is we want to market everything in EOS that we can, but we have a limited amount of funds. So how do we choose which EOS projects to market? And so um, that's maybe a little teaser we'll get in later of, of how we are actually going to solve that in the future. Generally speaking, it's to answer to some uh, struggles that we have seen during this, uh, I would say, since October 9, maybe after October 9, into the, the practice for that. Uh, you have translation services because we say EOSBs is solving the language barrier issue. Uh, thanks to the different hives, and now we have 16 hives. So that's a, a good um, uh, bunch, that's a bunch of, of uh, language. What are the, those translation services? How we already use some of the, the, the hives to, to do those translation services. Uh, that could be about any kind of solution onto the EOS ecosystem. Can you maybe give some uh, example? So we just described um, how EOSBs is a public good and the mechanism and how the funding is used. And mm -hmm. we're gonna update that with the 2.0 for the, for the public side of it. Mm -hmm. But um, part of the, the solution we've been using to, dis to decide which EOS projects to work on is if we have an EOS project that comes to us with a specific goal in mind, like for example, translating their Pomelo grant, we basically let them jump the line to, and they put up um, funds to jump the line so we can work on what they want us to work on. And so we've gotten a lot of requests for translations um, for Mandarin and Korean in mm -hmm. for Pomelo grants. Uh, we are working with projects to translate their Pomelo grants. And um, you know, we offer, so I've, I did quite a bit of research on what are the rates out there for translation services. We offer, uh, I, I feel like a very fair and affordable rate for those mm -hmm. services. Mm -hmm. And so um, please feel free to reach out to us, join our discord. If you want anything translated, we are the team to do it. We have 16 languages that you can put your content in. And, and so uh, please think of us if you need translations. Yeah, and I say here a shout out to the Chinese uh, Ive. I had my Pomelo grant uh, translated into uh, Chinese uh, and also in Korean. Uh, and uh, that's, okay. th that's mean a lot because uh, to be uh, very inclusive, Onto EOS, you have uh, to think about the language. If you want to address uh, the most of the of the people, because it's borderless, your solution can be totally borderless. Maybe you are based in uh, US, myself in Switzerland, any 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 part of the world, and you want to collaborate with other people. So today, there is no border, no limit. So the language is very very um, important. So shout out to the other I to have. Uh, doing uh, this translation, thanks to the EOSBs. The Chinese Hive and the Korean Hive were very busy when Pamelo came out. Um, they did a great job. They made every deadline. So I, I'm very happy with, with um, the Chinese and Korean Hive. Absolutely. So you see other translation service for sure into uh, any kind of tool onto the EOS uh, ecosystem where we need uh, translation indeed. So that's begin with Pomelo. I would say we are focused on Pomelo now, but that could be on other um, other solution. When the solution are going uh, in into uh, let's say MVP or let's say version one, and you want your website maybe translated, think about um, the outreach uh, marketing uh, solution EOSBs, the ecosystem in into the around, around yours. So, 
Yeah, I think the most value that someone can get from translations, if if you are, live in the in the western part of of the globe, and you have a DAP, um, translating your DAP into Korean and Mandarin, that's going to open up your customer base very much. And so I am in my talks with with uh, EOS DAPs. Um, I always encourage, you know, they want, you know, they want an article, they want a video, but I said, look, li- like, think about your whole DAP translated and opening it up. I know it's, it's a lot more work to kind of translate the whole DAP, but um, that's probably something to um, everyone should think about. And perhaps um, in the future, we can, we can help with that. Absolutely. You speak about the DAP, you speak about the website, it's for the content. Uh, the text content but for the video let's say like today we do a video now in english we would have this video translated into korean or uh chinese yeah, subtitles example. subtitles Huge. so uh, as far as i'm concerned it's video editing it's yes. just kind of basic video editing um okay. the this i guess the the what you need to do is when you're making the translations you have to format it in a different way so it's very clear um, what frame the subtitle, the translated text goes into. We've done one um, video uh, tr- uh, transcription uh, translation. Wow. Um, so yeah, the, just the format of the text needs to be different and then you can kind of do your basic video editing to get that up. And we can send our uh, video uh, project to the, um, the Hive. One Hive is equal to a language, so we can uh, be in touch with you. How we can uh, be in touch with you, basically, to ask a translation service? The Discord channel. Um, if you speak English, go ahead and DM myself. Um, and if you don't speak English, You'll find the the names in the orange letters. Those are the princess bees. You'll want to reach out to the princess bee of the language that you speak, and we can um, help. We can serve you better that way. Yeah, you will find a, a link into the video description onto the Discord server of EOS bees, and very well made with different categories, threads, and and all. Uh, that is very uh, fantastic Discord. And we, we love uh, more than Telegram. Uh, I think Telegram now, it's totally uh, no more accessible, right? Yes, the EOSB's Telegram is read-only uh, because read only. We, want, we want everyone on Discord. If, if you want to talk to the EOSB's, it's only on Discord. Yeah, and what an innovation for, for the entire EOS ecosystem to be on, a, on EOS uh, Discord uh, server. So uh, now I think we can break down into this EOSB's uh, version two, and let's explain uh, what what were the problems that led you to uh, the version two. What are you uh, solving with that? And yeah, the the next step. Uh, we started paying bees in November, and with within a couple weeks. Um, I was able to identify problems, and um, so that's why I started thinking about a, a new version. And so the main um, thing or problem I didn't like was that we use penalties to incentivize actions. So we have something called the B code, um, no insults, no causing negative reactions. And we have certain expectations if we're paying bees. We, we pay bees by their workers and their princess. So if you're a worker, you get paid by the princess. If you're a scout, you get paid by the worker. And the way it is right now, everyone expects to get paid. There's a salary. And if you don't do your job or you violate the bee code, you get a penalty. Mm-hmm. So. The expectation is payment up front with penalties. And so that's not a great model. We don't like we don't want to penalize all the time. So that's something. Another thing is um, 
there's a there's a high managerial load. So a worker has scouts. And in order for the worker to decide how much their scouts get paid, the worker has to keep track of all the scouts. Like the, the worker has to know the scouts really exactly. well. Right. And the worker spends a lot of time and effort seeing, okay, what, what are my scouts doing? What are they not doing? Um, same with the princess and workers. Um, now the princess and workers, it's not as bad with the princess and workers because the workers are trusted. They're more dedicated. The scouts are new EOS members or EOS members who don't have a lot of time. So that's really where the issue is. The workers and the scouts, workers are spending, it's just inefficient, um, the time. So that's number two problem. Number three is we have a, an upfront um, labor cost to, to join EOSBs. So you have to record a video of yourself saying the B code. You have to give us your EOS account, your name, your Twitter handle, your Reddit handle. You cannot get, you cannot be eligible for payment unless you give us that stuff upfront. So it's a high upfront labor cost. That's number three. And number four, which is what I mentioned before, which is we have our treasury. How do we decide together? Like, how could we decentralize the decision of which EOS projects that we are going to provide marketing services for based on our budget? Who gets to decide that? So right now, it's basically the Princess B and the Worker Bees. They're deciding which projects um, to work on. And we have like, uh, like, a, like I said, a VIP, you skip the line. If you pay us, you get to skip the line and, and we'll do the work for you. Um, so I think there's also a better way to do that. So those are the problems. And so now here's the solution. We're moving to a contest bounty model. Contest bounty model. What that means is that any single piece of work. So actually, right before I say that, the another problem is that, let's say there's the French hive, there's the Korean hive, there's the Vietnamese hive. They're all doing work in their own language. I don't speak the language. So how do I know exactly what work they're doing? Yeah. I ask them, I ask them to write a newsletter to show mm -hmm. all the work, but that's very subjective. Like, what do you include in the newsletter? There's no standardized process for me to see exactly what's going on in each hive. So that's why we're moving to a contest bounty model where every single piece of work, whether it be translating something, writing an article, um, doing a video, onboarding an influencer, it's gonna be a, in a form of a contest. So for example, here's a translation. Um, here's a contest, here's a, a, a 15 EOS bounty to do the translation. Now, anyone, whether you're a B or you're not a B, can yeah. be the first in line to complete that contest. Now, each work type, we're going to have different rules for the contest. Um, translations, for example, you don't want 10 people doing a translation and only one gets accepted. The other nine did work and didn't get paid. So it, translations, for example, it's first in line. The first one in line has a 24 hour deadline, depending on the amount of words that they're being translated um, to complete the translation. And so okay. our worker bees will be the judges for each contest. And okay. so, so someone submits the work, the worker bees judge whether it's accepted. Now in this way, they can see, does it adhere to the B code? Is it quality? And now we're not asking for the B code. Like, so one of the, one of the complaints we're getting is that um, there's an expectation you follow the B code anywhere on social media. And this is just unreasonable tracking. It's just, it's too much. It's not yeah. working. And so you only need to follow the B code if you win a contest, if to be eligible to get paid for EOSBs, the content that gets you the win in the contest must follow the B code. 
Okay, you say just follow the B code when you are in when you have win the contest, right? Right. But right. before that, uh, between that, into the in the meanwhile, you are in the uh, meanwhile. Yeah. You could do whatever you want. Um, Violating the B code. You could do whatever you want. You don't have to follow the B code in the meanwhile. It's not possible to okay. track people following the B code in the meanwhile. Like we cannot be looking at people 24 hours a day exactly. to see if they follow the B code. It's unrealistic. So this is a, a great example of something when you write something on paper, you think it's great, but actually when you try to do it, I it's love just that. unrealistic. Yeah, so, unrealistic, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So now here's how the money part works. The scouts no longer have an expectation of salary. Um, you only get paid if you win a contest. Now, the workers are running the contest. They mm -hmm. get a salary. Now, um, if you are getting a salary from EOSBs, then the old B code rules apply. If sure. you're getting a salary. Totally, totally. And it's the same with Princess Bs are also getting a salary. Now the Princess B um, are, is gonna take, now if you're familiar with our funding distribution algorithm, you'll see that there's um, funds for the queen, the princess, the workers, the scouts, and the honeypot. The funds, so we're keeping the same algorithm. Um, the queen, princess, and workers are getting a salary from the algorithm. The funds that go to the scouts and the honeypot, that is now going to be used as the bounty fund. Now, um, part of this 2.0, we, well, first, we're going to just do it manually. We're going to use spreadsheets to keep track of all this stuff. But yes. eventually, we're going to build a platform where the decision on, so, in the beginning, the decision on um, what pieces of work that is gonna be funded by the bounty fund for each hive is gonna be decided by the Princess B. In the future, we are going to have a non-transferable token. We're gonna to call it the buzz token. By winning contests, you earn the buzz token. That token gives you voting rights on what to do with the bounty funds. We're gonna put it up to vote every couple weeks. Um, so the princess, the, the people on salary, the queen, the princess, the workers, they're going to get the buzz token up front. They're gonna get a chunk of buzz token up front. So they're gonna get a head start on the buzz token. But from, from that point forward, only new buzz will be minted if you win a contest. Now. The princess can, can participate in contests. The workers can participate in contests. Any We're going to have a rule, any level. But the only rule is that if you're a worker, you cannot be judging the contest that you're participating in. So you, you must recuse yourself if you want to participate in the contest. We're going to have at least three workers um, per judge group. And so if a, if a worker wants to participate, then yeah. the princess will come in, fill that third spot to judge who wins the contest. Um, let's say you're a princess B, participate in a contest, the workers will judge um, your submission. And so even as queen myself, um, I could participate in a contest. Like when I wrote that EOS beginner's guide, that in, in like in this new model, there would be a bounty attached to that. And then I would submit my article to get approved and then win the bounty. The, the new model solves the problems that I was referencing earlier. We're, we're no longer penalizing for not doing work. We're rewarding for doing work. Um, it's a lot less of a managerial load because the workers are now just judging the contests. They're not tracking their scouts all the time. Now, the, the, the information that we require up front there's nothing up front unless you want to win a contest. So you can join our platform and you only need to give us the BCO video if you win a contest. So, you know, 
um, instead of asking people to do, for example, the B code video, give us their EOS account, all this stuff without any money. Like we, we asked them, okay, you need to sign up first and then you get paid. So now you can sign up and then get payment right away if you win a contest. Makes sense because that's, that's incentivize the people. I, I will say that that's incentivize the EOS Bs to, to be engaged and to deliver something and they will be paid on their um, delivery, I will say. That's begin there. And they will be judged when they are really uh, working after the contest. So they have win the contest. And since there, the rules that we have already discussed into the last, uh, uh, the earlier video about the B code and uh, no, neg no negative sentiment uh, to cause any issue, that's begin there. Uh, between, in between, it's impossible to, to, to be uh, behind each uh, post. But if you are in EOS Bs, guys, I speak for the Bs, if you are a B, you want to, 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 to behave correctly with art, soul, and mind, normally. So uh, you are here for that. You want to strive EOS and give a better sentiment. And also, uh, sometimes I have experienced it also myself uh, to to want to always answer to any third. Sometimes you can be involved into a loop of negativity. So maybe sometimes it's better to not answer to this particular post and create a new one with a better better ener energy and a better uh, message. Just to want to answer to answer to something. Uh, I know sometimes it's not easy, but it's better to to um, distance ourselves of of sometimes some negativity, and and create uh, positivity positivity with a new with new post engaging and yeah. Just to come back to what we discussed the last time, that's not that the the, the, the rules are not uh, no more valid. It's just at which moment that's take uh, that's come in place. I I would say right. Right, right. Okay, okay. So it's it's not a pivoting totally. It's more an improving of the the, the current model that you had. Um, that's more an improving of the model that you had, and, and now you are uh, making some uh, iteration. Uh, you are uh, improving. That's not something frozen. Maybe we can expect to have a version two dot one, two dot two. That's not uh, impossible. Uh, we will know. You will know only. Uh, we will know only as EOSBs when we are uh, working and and uh, continue the the road. Uh, it's impossible to have already all in mind about this token. I am very interested about this token. You 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 name it the buzz token. That's right. So yeah. this is a good uh, segue to talk about um, some of the partnerships that we've been working on with, with EOSBs. And one of them is Haifa Dow. They're on Palmelo right now. They've built, basically, if you remember EOS DAC and DAC factory, they've actually done it. They've built a DAC factory. Wonderful. It's open source code. They've built on Telos, but they want to port it to EOS. That's why they're on Palmelo. Now, part of their platform, um, Haifa is the underlying um, code base of the DAO. The first... I believe one of the first implementations is the Seeds DAO. So I have studied the way Seeds does it, and I want to take what they're doing with a non-transferable token. They call it Voice on Seeds. I want to call it Buzz for EOS Bs. And the way they do it is every time that you contribute to the DAO, you earn a financial reward with their seeds token. For us, it would be for us, it's going to be an EOS token, the EOS token. And they also get a voice token. It's non-transferable. There's no financial value, but you can vote with it. So the idea is um, we want to decentralize the decision on what piece, which EOS project, what piece of work should these public funds go to servicing 
That's the idea. Now we can do this on Taifa Dow. Um, I'm working with the team to try to get an EOS piece implementation. So, yeah. That will solve the governance uh, part of EOS bees. That will be the governance okay. layer. And uh, you will be rewarded in EOS token. And to, to, to participate to the decision, you are in a DAC, totally decentralized, and EOS bees doesn't belong to, the, to, them, to their fund funders. Uh, that will belong the decision to the community. Uh, have you to be into this DAC to participate into this DAC to be uh, EOS bees, or can you also be uh, outside of EOS bees, or you have to to be into the ecosystem of the EOS bees? Well, if you want to try to win a contest and earn a bounty reward, um, you'll. Um, when we get the our Haifa DAO up, you will log into the DAO, you'll sign up. And then, so yeah, um, w w I think, uh, so I'm still working on the, on the details of 2.0, but I'm feeling that if you win at least one contest, you'll yeah. get a badge that says you're a scout bee. And a trust so, score, a trust score, we can say. Or that, yeah. So yeah. we want to open it up to mm -hmm. anyone in EOS that, has some sort of marketing skills or content creation skills, business development skills, PR skills that we want to make it really easy for them okay. to suggest a contest with a bounty and win that and win that contest. Totally open, totally flexible, uh, fantastic. Um, you, you mentioned the partnership with IFA for the for the DAC. He's on Pomelo Grant. Shout out to him. And uh, you have also other partnerships, I would say. Yes. Um, we, we announced the other week that Node One is funding EOSBs. So uh, we're very thankful. Um, they are obviously um, leaders in the Korean community. And, um, you know, they are working on their um, an UPIT campaign. Um, the funds don't have any strings attached to the UPIC campaign. They just want to see EOSBs flourish. So um, we're very grateful for that. Um, it's more of actually a, a sponsorship at this point for with Node a One. A sponsorship, yeah, as I did uh, for uh, EOSBs. Uh, yes. So Node yeah. One is our second sponsor, and Nova Crypto was our first sponsor. Yeah, I will try to do another uh, uh, sponsoring. Um, I don't promise anything now in uh, this uh, video, but for sure I will do something very um, engaging for EOS Bs as a sponsor. I am, an also, I am also a, a worker B. Uh, I, I do my, 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 my things, I have to admit. Um, recently, I am very uh, focused on um, MindWeb. .io, that's also a Pomelo Grant. Yeah, definitely. And I know, Patrick, me and you have spoken um, privately about collaborating with the bees and, and MindWeb. Um, obviously, we have our, our translators. Um, MindWeb is about building a web of knowledge, and um, we want to translate the content so more people can kind of share in that knowledge. So I think it's kind of a, a very clear symbiotic uh, relationship that we can have, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking about that uh, since a long time, uh, about doing a collaborative online platform. And now that we have Pomelo uh, doing something public with, uh, you can be an entity, a corporate entity or an individual. If you have something public, good service for the EOS ecosystem, go on Pomelo. Just a little uh, reminder to Pomelo, uh, Daniel Keys is also into this uh, workshop and we speak about Pomelo for sure. And we speak also with Martin Breuer about NFTs uh, in the context of uh, Pomelo also, there are NFTs, so parenthesis. But it's clear, I was thinking about to collaborate with other ecosystems, to, to collaborate with other ecosystems. And EOSB was something for me uh, natural, because I was thinking to give the mind web mind maps translated and to, to let the EOSBs of different hive of different hives collaborate 
onto those mind maps. So that's make totally sense. Yeah. Other partnership uh, uh, outside of Node, Node One, maybe. Have you? Yes. There, there's one more worth mentioning, um, <clears throat> and it, it's in regards to our swarms. So this is our um, perhaps second most popular service, which are we call them swarms. That's where all the bees like and retweet or upvote or comment on a post. And um, tip it, also on Pomelo, they make it really easy to reward people for liking and retweeting a post on, or a tweet on Twitter. And so um, I have spoken uh, to Mark and um, Mark there's certain- Shout out. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out, shout out. Great guy. Yeah. Um, there are certain things that we need in EOSBs that, that Tippet does not offer currently. Like, for example, a whitelist. Um, you know, with if we're going to automatically reward people EOS for like in retweeting a post, we need a whitelist so it's not abused, for example. And um, so in with our 2.0, you post a bounty, let's say, I want a hundred EOS bounty. I want a hundred, you know, a hundred bees or 150 people to like and retweet the post. You like and retweet, it automatically gives you the EOS. So we don't like the labor, it's going to significantly decrease our labor costs. So the work, the, ju the judges, the workers, they don't need to go through the post and see who likes it and, re and retweets it. It's just automatic. So there's no judging necessary for swarms and swarms are really popular. Like we have a lot of interest with swarms. Um, and so, yeah, Tippet is a, is a major tool for us. And so we are forming um, a working relationship with Tippet. Okay. Nice structure and automated when we are into the swarms with uh, Tippet. Yeah. We're, we're just starting building, um, it's probably it's not going to be here till next year. We're just thinking of the ideas. It's the idea phase right now for 2.0. I'm talking to people at Haifa, and um, you know they're very busy too. But um, they see the value in the bees. The bees are going to help Haifa um, promote their software, and so it makes sense uh, for both of us to work together. And so we're just um, starting that relationship. I'm very excited about it. And I just want to ask. Anyone in the community, if you see FUD, send it to us. Anytime you see FUD, even if it's a, it's a, little, it's a little jab, send it to us. We'll put up the B signal and we will respond in large to the FUD. Each time you see something that could be cause uh, some, um, I would say, negative sentiment on yours, just tag yours B signal. Maybe put just a closing remark. I, I want to thank the EOS Network Foundation for enabling everything, all the new cool stuff that you see with the recognition grants, funding Eden, funding Pomelo. EOSBs would not exist without the EOS Network Foundation. And I am just so thankful and so grateful that they're here. And um, I just want to give a special thanks to them. I too, because they are into the middle of all ecosystem that's unifying all those ecosystem together with the possibility to collaborate between them. And each of those ecosystem are independent, are autonomous for themselves, but at a time you can decide to collaborate. Sometimes you, you don't even know that you have a chance maybe to to collaborate with other ecosystems because you are doing your stuff. When you are uh, going through the road, you are seeing, okay, now I see a possible collaboration. So nice uh, coverage for this uh, second time with you, Jesse. And uh, I can just uh, wish you uh, a Merry Christmas, uh, all the best with your family. And Merry Christmas, um, Patrick. Thank you. Thank you very much. And, and take care and until next time. Anytime you want it, you want me on, I am here, Patrick. Thank you, man. And go. Go EOS. EOS.